Ryan Warsofsky, you finish up your playing career at Cary College. You are trying to figure out what to do next, and you send an email off to South Carolina inquiring about an assistant coaching job. Could you have envisioned that you'd get to this point today as head coach of the San Jose Sharks? Oof, probably not this quick, um, but it, it, it's obviously an exciting time, and um, th- that moment was that's something that changed my career. And uh, going down there and that little coaching fraternity that's been down there for a long time uh, really developed who I am as a coach. Um, you know what it takes to to coach in the professional ranks, and um, you know really grateful for that opportunity by Rob Kincannon and Spencer Carberry that they gave me. You know my foot into the door, my got my foot in the door, and and kind of blossomed to the coach I am today. And um, it was a fun ride, and it's been a good ride. And and you know obviously to get to this point takes a lot of hard work and a lot of hours in the, in 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 the building down there and getting working my way up through the American Hockey League. So. Uh, Charleston's a great, great place and a special place in my heart. So had you coached at all before joining South Carolina? Yeah, I, I coached one year at Curry, um, as an assistant coach had played with some of the guys that were on the team. I was extremely green, uh, TJ ministers. He had just taken over the, taken over the program. Um, so we we're trying to help change the culture there, um, and it was a great opportunity for me to get into coaching and, and learn from TJ and get on the road to recruit. But I knew after, you know, that season that, you know, college hockey, I, I really enjoyed it, but I wanted to get into the pro ranks, knowing Mike Sullivan, um, being around him a little bit in his his career in, in Boston and in Providence in the American League, um, that I, I really liked the professional hockey game. And I really wanted to get into that 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 spot. And that's when South Carolina became available. What drew you to coaching? Um, I, I, I think when I was a young kid, um, you know, growing up, I knew as I got into, you know, college, I wasn't going to play in the National Hockey League. Um, again, I grew up, you know, close to Mike Sullivan, and he was a close family friend of ours, and I saw him coaching in Boston, um, would go in there quite a bit and, and, and pick his brain on, on things. And um, just seeing his preparation, seeing his communication style, um, you know, seeing him coach the Boston Bruins, a hometown team of mine, kind of got me interested in it. And, you know, everyone grows up wanting to, you know, play in the National Hockey League. I grew up at some one, one point wanted coaching in the National Hockey League. And um, to get here today is, is obviously very special and I'm very humbled by it. Um, but I've got a lot of people that have mentored me and you know, supported me along the way from family to coaches that are in the league today, that coaches that I played for. Uh, that have really helped me get to this point today. Is that part of what, you know, we had your introductory press conference and and saw you get emotional. I'm an emotional guy. I cry at weddings. Uh, Is it, was it just the journey getting to that point? Like what really, what grabbed you in the moment? Yeah, I think, um, yeah, it was, it was a journey to get here. Um, It was the people that have helped me get here from my family and my parents, my brothers, to coaches, to um, coaches that I've played for. Uh, and I care. I deeply care about my my job, and I deeply care about helping people get better. I, I care about seeing a locker room full of cele- you know, celebrating a win and, and you know for the common goal, a, a group of players coming together for a common goal to win a hockey game, to win a championship, to see people and individuals get to goals that they never thought were possible and pushing players and challenging players, but having that relationship with them on the human side, um, to see, you know, players of mine get married and have kids and, and grow as, as, you know, he, human beings. Um, that's why I do what I do and, and, and I love what I do. And I think I'm extremely passionate, passionate about it. Um, I'm addicted to winning and I'm ultra competitive. So there's a lot of things that probably went into that moment. Um, and, and the biggest thing is just, you know, there's a lot that goes into these jobs and every coach will tell you that the hours that you put in the, you know, you don't see your families a lot, the travel. Um, again, I, I, it took me a long, and I know I'm young, a, young, a young guy, but it took me, a, you know, a lot of work and effort and to get to this moment. And I don't take that very lightly and people have to take chances on young people. And there's some people that took some chances on me, you know, that big word that you get when you talk to teams about you need experience you need, 
you know, I, I didn't have experience when I went to South Carolina. I didn't have experience when I went to Charlotte and Mike Valucci took a chance on me. You know, I didn't have a lot of experience when, you know, I know I just won, but when David Quinn and Mike Gurr hired me to come here as an assistant coach, I didn't have a lot of experience to become the head coach here. And, and Mike Gurr took a chance on me and, and believed in me. So I have to thank those people. And, and that takes a lot of, you know, uh, confidence to do, make those decisions. I'm sure these last six weeks have probably been nerve wracking, right? You have someone that's helped mentor you the last couple of years and, and David Quinn, who has the, the Boston connection, uh, you're part of his staff. He gets let go. I'm sure part of you is thinking, am I even going to have a job here next year in the NHL? And then you go through the interview process and you know, they're bringing in obviously other candidates, some that have experience, some not, some that have bigger names and resumes, some played in the NHL, and you're just sitting here kind of waiting, wishing, hoping, praying that you get the chance. What was it? What was the call like from Mike, and, and what has the last six weeks or so been like? Yeah, to say it wasn't stressful would be a lie. I mean, um, it was hard. It was it was a good process. It was a long process. Um, you know, I feel for my wife that, you know, probably I wore thin with her a little bit at times because of the the roll, roller coaster of emotions that you go on through the process. Um, you know, whether I'm going to be back in San Jose, we have a young family, do we have to move? Um, all those things are real um, that a lot of people and coaches go through that, you know, we don't talk about a lot. There's young families, there's, you know, coaches that have kids in high school and in college that you have to consider. Um, so it was tough on my family, but obviously this result was all worth it. Um, the call I got, you know, from Mike a few days ago um, was something that I'll never forget for the rest of my life. Um, just the, the emotion, the being with my family to, to celebrate that what was very special. Um, yeah, it was, it was an emotional time. So you mentioned your family a couple of times. I know you're from a, a close knit family. Um, if people are familiar with the last name, your brother, David played in the NHL, uh, had a chance to cover him. Uh, just tell me what it was like growing up in the Warsawski household and, and, uh, all the help and support you've gotten from your parents along the way. Yeah, I think, um, well, I have three brothers, ultra competitive. Um, when we go on these family vacations still to this day, it's a backyard football game. It's, you know, a swimming contest that it usually turns into some sort of argument and fight where the wives are breaking us up. Um, so that's probably where I get my competitiveness from. Um, you know, my younger brother, David, who are probably best friends. We talk every single day, you know, I followed him in his career, um, you know, a lot through his rank ranks through the professional game and in college and his prox prospect status and all that. And, um, you know, we grew up in a small town in Marshfield where, you know, we had really close family friends and, and it was always a street hockey game that, um, became very competitive. So, um, my brothers are super supportive. Um, like I said, my press comments, they'll be my Monday morning quarterback of some decisions that I'll make along the way that they don't like. And, um, but that's good. It keeps me on my toes a little bit and, and there's, um, they keep me humbled in ways. And then my parents who raised, uh, you know, four boys, which is not an easy, easy thing to do when my dad was working two or three jobs to create his, you know, career and his job, his, um, you know, company and, and, he was trying to build a, his own business, and uh, he, he was never he never missed a game. Uh, any of ours, we'd be going different spot uh, locations, baseball games, hockey games. My mom and dad uh, never missed an event for either one of us, and that that means a lot to us. And that's who we are as as people. That you know, when you and I'm going through it now, when you raise a family and you have kids, they look to you. And how do you love your wife? And how do you? Um, handle adversity and that's who you become as humans and I give a lot of credit I am who I am today because of my mom and dad I'm the husband I am because of my dad so yeah. I love hearing yeah. that Ryan um, let's go back to the beginning of your your coaching run um, you're in South Carolina I mentioned that you sent an email that you said changed your life um, you get an opportunity as an assistant and then you work under Spencer Carberry. What is it about South Carolina, Jared Bednar, uh, Spencer Carberry, now yourself, three head coaches coming through that organization in a relatively short period of time um, that not just presented a great opportunity, but 
really the best incubator for you to learn under some really talented people. Yeah, I think you know, Spence is is a great communicator. He's got a great passion behind you know his ideas and how he thinks the game. And I I was a sponge with him. And you know I remember after my first year there, I said Spence, like, what did you think? How did I do? Like, let's have a little meeting here. Like, what do I need to get better at? And he's like, you did a great job. And the one thing that stuck out was you asked a lot of questions. And I would ask a lot of questions. And I think there's there's two different things. You can listen and then you can hear things. Um, and I, I, I heard him and I took him and I would keep a journal of every single day of what his meetings were about, who we met with. Um, you know, did he meet with a train? And every facet of running an organization, I would just kind of follow it and just kind of continue to watch and watch and watch. And and that's where I developed the most of who I am as a coach today. Um, you know, Jared Bednar, who has been a really good sounding board for me and just talked to him a couple of days ago about, well, hey, Beds, I'd like to talk to you about training camp and how you develop that culture there in Colorado and to now obviously went in the Stanley Cup just a couple of years ago. So um, there's some great people. Jason Fitzsimmons is a pro scout in, in Washington, was a coach there for a long time, who I still talk to today. He's been through a lot in his career. Kale McLean, who's in Calgary. Um, and then it's kind of all pieced together by Rob Kincannon, the president there, who does a great job of bringing in coaches and letting them grow and make mistakes and develop because um, that's important. We're not perfect. Um, we don't have these big egos. And I'm still t- who I am today. I'm going to make mistakes here in San Jose. I'm going to continue to learn. I'm going to ask my players to get better. I better get better as a coach um, and, and improve as, as, as the days go on and the weeks go on. So um, you know, Rob does, is, is a bit big influence in my career. He's given me that chance. Uh, and I got, we got a great little fraternity down there in South Carolina that we all use each other and, and support. So each time Ryan, you would make a step up to the next league, whether it was, you know, so you start as an assistant in the ECHL, you become a head guy, you go to the AHL, you become an assistant, then you become the head guy. Obviously you find success and you win in Chicago. But then you come to the NHL and you start as an assistant again. I was the reason I asked this question is there was this conversation about Chris Knobloch. I'm in Florida at the Stanley Cup final, and he mentioned that he interviewed with Paul Maurice for an assistant job. And Paul said to him, Look, I'd love to have you on my staff, but I think you're more of a head coach. When you how did you know when you went to the next place what the right role for you was? Because some guys might say, you know what, I'm better off staying down a level if I can continue to be a head coach because yeah. that's ultimately what I want to be. If that was your goal, how did you go about navigating the process? Yeah, so um, I, I, I leaned on a lot of people like Mike Sullivan um, and Jared Bednar and Spencer. And, um, you know, I've interviewed after we won there in Chicago with, with quite a few teams and went through a lot of process. And, and at one point I was going back to Chicago and, you know, David Quinn and Mike Greer come to San Jose and had a r- little bit of a relationship with Quinny and knew Greerzy from, you know, his time at Boston University and, and followed his career. Um, and it just felt right when, when talking to them, it felt like this was the right move for me uh, and my family to come here, get the experience. Um, it was an opportunity to run, you know, the, the, the defense and work with an Eric Carlson and, and see this transition period through San Jose. And I thought it was the right move for me. There were some teams, you know, that I said, you know, I was interested in and I talked to. There were some teams that I, I wasn't, you know, going to leave to go to. And that, that's that's real. And, um, you know, I, I talked to Torts quite a little bit. I've gotten this, uh, got to know him quite a bit here these last couple of years. I've used him a lot and he, what his experiences were coming back when he was in the American League in Rochester and going to the National Hockey League. So, you talk to people, you, you have a feel for different organizations, and you just go through that process. And it's not an easy decision. Leaving in Chicago was, was really tough. I, I love my time in the American Hockey League. It's a great place to learn and continue to improve as a coach. Uh, I love working for the Carolina Hurricanes. I, I thought they were really on the up and up. I you, you know, talked to Roddy Brindamore really a lot about the, how the way he sees a game, and him and I are very similar. Love working with him and his staff and, and Donnie Waddell and Tom Dundon. So um, I think they have something really good going there, and, and I like working with their prospects they had coming. Um, so it was a tough decision, and, and ultimately it led me to this point um, to get the experience in National Hockey League, which I thought was really important. What stood out to you the most being on an NHL bench for the first time a couple years ago? Like, What was the biggest thing that you're like, holy smokes, this is so different than anywhere I've been? 
I think the biggest thing is just the schedule, um, the practice time, and um, you know the the players are the same. Just some of them make a little bit more money, um, but at the end of the day, the, the schedule is more of a grind. You don't as get as much practice time as you'd like, so you got to navigate that to develop players at this level. It's still it's becoming a younger and younger league where the player has to develop in the National Hockey League. It, it's it's a must. So you got to cover out. You got to be really diligent in your scheduling for practice. Um, you got to be diligent in your video meetings and making sure the message gets a, gets across. Um, so I think that was been the biggest adjustment. Um, and the game's a little bit quicker. The guys are a little bit bigger. As each level you grow, you get higher from the ECHL to the American League to the National Hockey League. The game gets a little bit faster, a little bit quicker. Um, so that took an adjustment period, but um, I'm ready for this this role here I am in now, and I'm excited for the opportunity. So I don't think I'm breaking any news, but Mike Greer has he's already kind of said, "Hey, we're Macklin's our guy. We're going to take Macklin Celebrini in a, in a couple weeks at the draft." Do you have any relationship with him? I know he played at BU. Do you know him? And just how excited you are? To, you mentioned development. It's going to be such a big part of this job just to be able to get your hands on guys like Celebrini and and Will Smith that are coming in the door. Yeah, I don't have any relationship with him yet. Um, you know, I, I've watched him quite a bit live um, during the season on on TV, and then you know I've watched him here on on just on video, and uh, I've talked to the coaches at Boston University about him. Um, everything obviously we've heard is 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 from not just his hockey play, but as a kid, as a person, he's an outstanding young man that is a culture driver, that's a leader, that is ultra competitive, and, and that matches up with kind of how I am of that competitiveness, which we need here in, in San Jose. And he's going to be a big part of our organization going forward. And uh, I'm excited to get to work with him. Uh, you know, Will Smith, who him and I have talked already. We both live in Massachusetts in the off season. So, you know, we see ourselves getting to get linking up here together here soon, um, whether it's grabbing a coffee and, and just talking as uh, getting to know him as a person. I, I, there's, I know he's an ultra competitive kid and he's a smart kid and he wants to, grow as a hockey player and, and he's got, you know, a unique skill set, but I'm just going to try to get to know him as a human being. And, and then we'll get, as we get into training camp and through the months here, I'll get to know him more as a hockey player, but I need to know what he is and what makes him tick as a person. Um, I want to get to know his family, you know, what his hobbies are, and then I'll get to know him as a hockey player. Is there a mindset that you'd like to instill in San Jose? The the losses have piled up the last couple of years. Just talking to people who have been in and out the door there, they said at times it's been a little bit of a tough environment to focus and play just because sometimes you feel so far away from being competitive. What's what's your goal when you step in, you know, to training camp to try and, you know, impress upon, uh, you know, what should be a really young roster? Yeah, I think the biggest thing is our competitiveness and we need to become more competitive. Um, it is at the ground right now. This bar is at the ground. Um, obviously years ago they have had some success, but, um, these last four or five years have been very, very difficult for a lot of players that have been here. Um, we need to be some, we need some positive energy to come in. Uh, we've got some hope now that we have with some prospects that are going to be coming. Um, but we need to raise the bar, uh, of competitiveness of, you know, when we go out on a Tuesday night, win or lose teams leave our building or we leave a team's building saying, damn, that was a tough team to play against. Um, you know, we, we got to get some respect back in this, in this league of every time we play and we put on our, our, our skates, that's a tough game for the, our opponent. Um, so that's going to be my goal. Um, you know, and, and it's not going to be, it's not going to happen overnight. It's going to be a process that we get to, we're going to focus on, you know, our first practice. We're going to f- focus on our first meeting and, and go from there. Cause we can't, um, you know, it's, it's a message I got from my mom. You get a, you can't, you know, have this big worry of something down the road before it happens. we got to be focused on where our feet are um, and, and building this thing and, and getting this bar off the ground of, of being an ultra-competitive uh, organization. Tom said that. It actually leads perfectly into my last question, which is you can hear uh, the emotion and see it um, in terms of how you know thankful you are for this opportunity and how excited you are to be able to get one of these jobs. But there's all this talk, hey, whoever is going in there, with that roster set up to fail, uh, you know, maybe that's not the best job for someone right out of the gate. Maybe, you know, there's all sorts of reasons of why, hey, the San Jose Sharks have been in a tough spot of late and they've got a long road in front of them. What would you say to someone 
um, that would say that this is an incredible opportunity, one of 32? Yeah, I think um, in this world we live in, there's a lot of outside noise and pressures and people talking. That's the world we live in, and I understand that. Um, but I'm going to ignore that noise. We're going to focus on the San Jose Sharks. This isn't about me. This is about us as an organization getting this play, this this franchise going in the right direction. I can't guarantee you we're going to win a Stanley Cup in a year or two years or we're going to make the playoffs. I'm not worried about that. I'm worried about us getting this team, um, this foundation, this culture going the right way, uh, getting ready for training camp, making sure we're, our staff is prepared, uh, our structure is in place, uh, the roles are carved out for our players. And then as these these years go on, we'll start building this thing. And I think it's a great job. It's a great opportunity for myself and, and whoever comes here as our staff. Uh, I'm excited about it. And we're going to ignore that outside noise uh, and prove people wrong that I think um, we're closer than, than you know people think. And, and if people want to be negative, let them be negative in their own space because we're going to be really ultra uh, positive and competitive and try to get better every single day we're here. What a message. Ryan, uh, your passion uh, burns through the screen. Uh, it was a pleasure getting to chat with you and get to know your story. And uh, best of luck as new head coach of the San Jose Sharks. Thanks a lot for joining me. Thank you, Frank. I appreciate it. And uh, ho hopefully see you here soon. What's up, hockey fans? If you enjoyed that video, then you need to be hitting the subscribe button right here at Daily Faceoff. Exclusive interviews and analysis from our hockey insider, Frank Zaravalli, fantasy updates from Brock Sagan, and a daily live show at noon Eastern, Monday through Friday. You don't want to miss any of the fantastic content, so hit that subscribe button.